Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Our pastor, George, is back, and he has got a lot more lessons on <laughs> prosperity. What number is this, George? Gloria, today, 131 days. 100, 131 days. Day 131. Pastor has talked to us about prosperity. There is no reason for any of us to be in lack that That's has heard right. those. That's we right. We believe it. We receive it. We take it. <laughs> well, you know, the last time that we did this, or the first time we taped, I said to you, you can't exhaust the subject of prosperity. And you said, Let's try. And we're still doing and that. And we're still we're doing still it. it. And it's 131 working. days later. Praise God. And hey, we're prosperous. 335,000 outlines have been downloaded from that these sessions awesome, that we have Lord. done together over the low over these 131 days. From this little studio out here in the country. In the country. In Texas. That is amazing, isn't it? 335,000. People needed it, they yep. wanted it, and That's I right. believe they received it. That's right. And you know what? We want testimonies too. We I have one. Hear... Oh, good. Would you like to hear a testimony? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I have one. Listen to this one. Pastor George and Gloria, my wife have been greatly, my wife and I have been greatly blessed by her broadcasts on debt freedom. We have a completely different perspective Hallelujah. as we listen now because we are living in the afterlife, life after debt. Hey, that's good, isn't <laughs> Do you it? Like we that? gotta remember that. Last summer, we were blessed to walk into the bank and pay off our mortgage in full. Praise God. God showed us His purpose to establish His covenant in the earth, His plan, which is discipline and diligence, yes, that's His good. provision, which is His riches and glory through Christ Jesus, and His payment, in full. Now that, that would preach right they there. They got it. That would preach. Let's read that every day. <clears throat> That's that good. That's awesome. Praise we God. went to the bank parking lot and shouted together right in the middle of town, we're debt free. A milestone marker that we will never forget. We paid off a 30 year mortgage in 14 years. Praise we God. will never go back. Yay. Now we only owe love wherever we go. Isn't that awesome? So often we can show that love because there's money in our account instead of the bankers. That's the way it ought to and be. And this came from a pastor. Isn't, Isn't that wonderful? That great. Isn't Lord. that good? Oh, I appreciate hearing Praise that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> I believe there have been a lot of people and, and we want them to let us know. Yes. Let us know your yes. testimony, how you got out of debt, that you did get out of debt and so on. And if you just didn't pay attention the first time, here we go again. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, here we go can, again. Prosperity is more fun than poverty and debt. Amen. I think we could safely say that. I think we can safely <laughs> say that. Well, well Jordan, Gloria, we appreciate all that. Today. All that uh, research that you've done to give us. Well, I've done some more research. Going. And it's interesting to note that on the, the research that I do, I'm researching Kenneth and Gloria. I research their, <laughs> <laughs> I research their, their materials, their books, their CDs. And <clears throat> this series that we're starting today is actually, has actually been inspired by one Believer's Voice of Victory article that you wrote. Hmm. We're going to spend two weeks on this topic. On one article. And one article, and it came from the April 1996 issue. It's 96. Of the Believer's Voice of wow. Victory. And I was researching this, I was actually preaching on this topic in church, and <clears throat> I went online and I looked up uh, on our website anything that had to do with receiving our inheritance. Mm -hmm. And it brought me to an article that you wrote. And this is the article by Gloria Copeland Receive your inheritance. called Receive Your Inheritance. Ooh, that and this good. article absolutely inspired me to do this series. Praise so, God. So, <clears throat> what we're going to be talking that about good. over these next two weeks, you and I are going to be talking about being heirs of God, receiving our inheritance Amen. in Christ. Praise God. Now, just, I, I just like that. That is great. Being That's heirs what we're supposed of God to do is receive. and receiving our inheritance in Christ. So I want to begin with this. We're going to start <clears throat> with Galatians chapter 3. As you turn there, though, let me read this to you. Gloria, this is what you wrote. And I'll, I'll be reading different parts of this article throughout the two weeks. Okay. But this is what you wrote uh, in the article. Listen to this. 
Have you ever been invited to an attorney's office for the reading of a will? I haven't. <laughs> this is what you said. I haven't. <clears throat> Where I come from, there was never enough money left for the relatives to fight over when somebody died. True. When I read that, I laughed out loud. <laughs> was the truth. <laughs> Most of the people I knew didn't leave wills. They left bills. Oh, my. <laughs> but then you said How this. How true it is. But, glory to God, that's not the case anymore. That's right. I became heir to a fortune mm. more than 40 years ago in Little Rock, Arkansas, when I gave my life to Jesus. Yes, that's right. At that moment, I was born again into the richest family ever known. I get excited just reading about that Ooh, right I now. I like that. <clears throat> I, I was born again, when I was born again, into the richest family ever known. I was born into the royal family that owns Amen. and operates the universe. Amen. I received an inheritance so vast, it will take me all of eternity to fully comprehend it. That's awesome, George. I like that. Now, okay, so you went on, you continued. Some people get excited about tracing their natural family history. They like to know if they have great people in their family tree because it makes them feel like they've come from good stock. <laughs> you and I ought to be that way about our heritage as believers. Our ancestors are the greatest men and women who ever walked the face of the earth. Oh my. We can trace our lineage back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, King David, all the way to Jesus. Think about that. Those are our forefathers. Praise God. And then you wrote this. Now, wait a minute, you might say. These are Jewish men. They lived in Canaan in Israel. You're an American from Arkansas. <laughs> You're not part of the family. And then you wrote, well, not physically, but spiritually, according to the Bible, yes, I am. And if you've made Jesus yeah. Christ the Lord of your life, you are too. We were, I was born into a rich family. You were born into a rich the family. The second time I was born. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. It is. That's exactly right. Hallelujah. And you said here, <clears throat> you said, I became heir to a fortune when I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. That's good, George. Isn't I'm that glad something? you drug that up. <laughs> so I want us to look at Galatians Hallelujah. chapter 3, Galatians 3, 13, 14, and then verse 29. And let's take a look at that. It says this, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, right, so that so. the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of, promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, let's look at verse now, 29. Now, that's one of the most important <clears throat> things you can learn. Yes, it is. That you've been redeemed from the curse. Because every bad thing, poverty, yep. sickness, yep. every bad thing was under that curse. So I'm free, hallelujah. That's one of the first scriptures that I learned when I got here in 1976. I learned this scripture that I was redeemed from the it curse so of the much. law. And that curse includes poverty, sickness, lack, That's right. disease. Everything bad, every bad thing. Every bad thing. I mean, you name it. You name every bad thing. And we've been redeemed from that bad thing. I guess that's what you could say, really. The curse right. is every bad thing. It so is. Jesus yeah. has redeemed us from every, every bad, bad thing. thing. That's right. And it says <clears throat> that he was made a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham, thank God for the blessing of Abraham. Deuteronomy chapter 28. What a magnificent scripture that is. We're redeemed and we're blessed if we're in Christ that's Jesus. That's right. That's right. So that the blessing of Abraham may come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And now look at verse 29. This is exciting. Verse 29, and if, if. You, if, you be in, if you be Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs, heirs according to the promise. Glory to God. Gloria, we I are heirs to a fortune. A fortune. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory that, to God. Isn't that great? <clears throat> now those things, that, that very thing right there is what we learned when we were broke, 
disgusted, disgusted. and sorry <laughs> in just, debt. Just like the song says. Oh, man. We learned that we've been redeemed from the curse. Poverty is a curse. Yeah. If you don't know that, it you is. have never been poor. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you be Christ, or I wrote in my Bible here, if you be in Christ, in other words, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you are in Christ, then you are, you are, I'm circling the word are, you are. right now, you are Abraham's seed. You know, I, I did uh, a search on this one time, and I, but I don't, I can just bear, you know, I'll vaguely tell yeah. you about this, but yeah. if you, if you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus, you're like those people that have inherited a lot of money, but nobody knows where they are. Wow. And the, in this wow. certain will, yes, they yes, have all yes. of this blessing, That's and it. all of this, these goods, That's it. property. But where are they? Where are they? they? People, the legal people don't know where they are to, to let them know it. And that's the way uh, most Christians are. They've inherited healing. They've inherited prosperity. You are so right. You are so right. They have inherited no, uh, being in a position of no lack. Right, right. But they don't know the, what the know will it. says. They don't know what the... <laughs> so you're going to tell us this week. That's, Gloria, that's what we're going to talk about good. for two weeks. Good, good, good. On I'm a listening. couple of the days, we're going to have the reading of the will. Good. I need to hear this every day. We're going to read the will. You know... Let me read a couple of translations of that verse 29 in the Amplified. If you belong to Christ, uh, are in him who is Abraham's seed, then you are Abraham's offspring and spiritual heirs according to the promise. Amen. The New, the New Living Translation. And now that you belong to Christ, you are true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Amen. Ooh. Here's something for you. It's just okay. hot off the wire. Okay. Don't be mad at me because I'm wealthy. I inherited it. <laughs> I inherited That's it. That's perfect. That's Glory perfect. Glory to God. Don't be mad at me because <clears throat> I'm wealthy. I'm increasing. I inherited Don't it. Don't be mad at me because I'm increasing. I've inherited. That's it. Ooh, how Oh, that's good, I'm an Gloria. heir. Isn't that what the Bible says? That's right. We're that's, heirs. We're heirs. We're Praise heirs. Praise God. Verse 29, the message translation. Since you are Christ's family, then, I like this, you are Abraham's famous yes. descendant. Yes, Heirs according to the covenant promises. Is that awesome or what? <laughs> I'm Abraham's famous You've already descendant. preached me happy, George. <laughs> Hallelujah. You said in your article, Gloria, you wrote... I became heirs to a fortune when I gave my life to Jesus. People don't realize, like you just said, people don't realize that, that all that the Father has became ours That's right. when we were born again. We became heirs of God, children of the King, with the right to partake of our full inheritance. Amen, amen. Full Seems like in one of the books I did, <clears throat> our articles are... I've forgotten now what it was exactly. Yeah. But I gave examples of people who had inherited, but nobody knew oh. where they were. Yeah. And they yeah. were they might have been living in yeah. poverty, and that, yet they were wealthy. Right. But nobody knew where the heirs were. Glory to God. Well, I, I wrote this down in our notes. We know. <clears throat> Many don't realize that they are heirs. That's right. Many believers do not realize that they are heirs of God. Yeah. And God's full inheritance Joint belongs to them. With they Jesus. are, I wrote here, they're ignorant of all that belongs to them in their inheritance. And you know, you're talking about people that, that are heirs and don't know it or they can't find them. Listen to this. This was an, uh, a headline from a December 30th, 2012 issue of the London's Daily Mail newspaper. Here's the, here's the headline. Homeless man who didn't know he was a millionaire is found dead before he could be told of his fortune. Body of heir to $300 million. $300 million. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good article. Yeah, no, he was heir. The three hundred million dollars sure. discovered frozen under a railway bridge. Did you make that up? I did not, Gloria. That I didn't is make a, it. 
<laughs> and I don't example. mean I don't mean to laugh at that. No. It's not funny. Well, he doesn't care. But now. <laughs> but but there's so what I just thought about when I, I read this. The Lord. There's so many believers frozen under the railway. Yeah, that we got to remember that. <laughs> that that they Thaw don't out. They don't, and <laughs> get a grip. They don't know what belongs to them. That's the truth. They don't. The majority know. of believers. majority well, of them don't the know. The majority of born again believers don't know that. <laughs> They don't know. That's right. They've been born again, but they don't know what the Bible says. Many don't realize they are heirs. They're ignorant of all that belongs to them in their inheritance. And there are still others that don't know how to yeah. take their inheritance. That's right. That's right. I was in that condition at one time in my life, but then I found out how <clears throat> to receive yeah. and that it was God's yeah. will for us to prosper. Ken That's and I right. found out, found that out that we'd been redeemed from the curse of poverty. And within 11 months, we were out of debt. Completely out of Ken debt. Ken was born in debt, I think. <laughs> he had debt <laughs> he had when debt. I married him. <clears throat> yeah. But now, 11 months after we got found right. out, right. we'd been redeemed, right. we were out of debt. And we've been out of debt for all these years. Hallelujah. You all have taught me <clears throat> about who I am in Christ, what is mine in Christ, and you've taught me about being an heir of God. So listen, right. here is the purpose of this study. This is what we're going to be doing for the next two weeks. It's important. There are three major points. And, and to just let you know, all of our outlines that we're preaching to you, they're, they are available to you online. Go to the picture of Glory and Me on the website, click onto it, and it'll take you to all of these outlines. Right. You can have them, download them. Preach them. <clears throat> preach them. These would be an awesome, I've taught That's these a, in church. Just think, George, that goes all over the world. These are going all <clears throat> over the world. And so far, 335,000 people have downloaded these Man, notes. Isn't that awesome? So listen, here's the purpose Somebody's of the study. Somebody's listening. Number one, we're going to renew our minds and we're yep. going to see ourselves as heirs of God, heirs to the fortune. Amen. Number two, we're going to discover what is included in our inheritance. Some people don't know. They That's don't realize right. Right. what's in their inheritance. And number three, we're going to learn how to take receive that it. inheritance. Amen. We're going to learn how to receive that inheritance. And so <clears throat> we're, we're going to thaw That's out. That's good, George. We're going to thaw out some folks. <laughs> that Amen. Don't, that don't know. Amen. I mean, think about that. Well, everybody, even if you know it, you know, have the uh, grasp of the topic. Right. You need this is right. stuff you need to listen to over and over, because because trouble, debt, lack, yeah. Uh, yeah. all kind of things, taxes, whatever it is, is yes. trying to eat your lunch. Yes. Uh, that's continual. The curse is continual. The curse is continual. So the believers have to be continual that's in their right. faith. That's right. And believe God and not let the curse in. Gloria, Why? Because we've been redeemed from it. We've been redeemed from it. Amen. That's I was watching, <clears throat> during the time I was studying this, I was putting these notes together. And one morning I got up, I was getting ready for church on a Sunday, and I, I turned on the broadcast, the Sunday broadcast. Well, Kenneth starts preaching. And he said, he said, I want to tell you a story. I thought, well, this is interesting. I've never heard him quite say it like that before. No. He said, I want to tell you a story about the queen's servant. Oh, yes, I remember that story. And about how the queen's servant had retired and began to live in abject poverty, did not know what belonged to her That's until right. somebody read to her what was left to her by the queen. We're going to play that right now. Hallelujah. So here's Brother Copeland telling us the story. That's good. About the queen's servant. We'll be right back. There is a story of, that, that's true, of one of the queen's handmaidens, worked for her all of her life, illiterate woman, lovely woman, knew God but didn't know how to read or write. And it came time for her to retire. She's getting on up in the age. And so they retired her. She didn't have anything. 
she felt like she'd been well taken care of all of these years. And she finally just kind of drifted down and drifted down until she wound up sick, living in a, a, a pauper shack, no money, not enough food to eat, and people got worried about her. And um, some of them got together and went and got a doctor and took her in there and told him, said, she, she won't come to the doctor. She, she's a poor woman. She doesn't have anything. Well, they didn't know who she was. Well, the doctor comes in there, and sure enough, it's malnutrition and, and, and just, just, just bad health all the way around from deep poverty. And he's ministering to her, and he sees a, he sees a certificate plaque-looking thing hanging on the wall. Curious, that's not usually hanging on the wall of a poor person's shanty with the queen's seal on it. And he wanted to see what this is. He goes over there. It was her total stipend. It was her total retirement. Funds in her behalf by the queen to live anywhere she wanted to live, taken care of with her own servants and everything she could possibly have, but she considered herself unworthy, you know, and it came her time, she's old, so she just had to get out of the way. She didn't know she'd been taken care of. She couldn't read the thing. And nobody read it to her. I expect there are those that read it and didn't believe it. There are people who read this and don't believe it. He said, lady, this is horrible. So he, he gets her up and gets her an attorney and they get this matter straightened out and the queen heard about it and got involved and came and got her. Well, I'll tell you what, we're serving somebody more than the queen. I'll tell you what, our big brother is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and he is our blood kin. And he'll come and get you and get you out of there if you just learn to call on what is your treasure. Hallelujah. Pastor George is here with the good news of abundance, <clears throat> blessing, increase, no lack. No lack. Oh, man. Redeemed from the curse. Redeemed from the curse. Praise we're, God. We're all ears. <clears throat> and it's, even if you know it, you need to feed on it. That's right. To keep it keep moving. That, keep your faith strong yeah. in it. Glory to yep. God. Keep feeding on it. I remember... <laughs> Keith Moore years ago talked about this. You know, he, he led healing school for Brother Hagen, mm -hmm. and he would not only teach healing school, but he would watch Brother Hagen's healing videos. Yeah. All of a sudden, he found himself healed. Praise God. And he thought to himself, that'll work for prosperity too. That's right. <laughs> so he started doing that. So you mm -hmm. keep feeding on the Word of God. Prosperity, uh, <clears throat> some people get all bent out of shape over the prosperity message. Oh, yeah. But it's in the yeah. Bible. And it's part of the, the redemption from the curse of poverty. Yes. We're redeemed from the curse of poverty. Hallelujah. That's right. And uh, I, I don't know. We were broke. We were, as somebody said, <laughs> so poor they couldn't pay attention. And uh, we heard about getting out. Of, we, we heard about prosperity, that we were redeemed from the curse. Yes. And we saw so the first thing we did was go after paying our, getting, getting out of debt. Right, right. And Ken was in debt when I right. married him. So we got out of debt. It well, took us 11. Time. He had debt, debt on his tricycle? Is yeah, that? I, think, I, saw, I said, I think he must have had debt on his tricycle. tricycle. But at any rate, it took us 11 months to get out of debt. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, God helped us. Because why? We've been <clears throat> redeemed from the curse of lack. And if you're going to stay in debt, you're going to pay for something two or three times. That's right. And uh, that's right. It's just better to just pay. Terry cash. and I bought our last house with cash, and then we renovated it. And it took five years to renovate it, believing God for the cash all the way along. Now, how long would it take to pay it off if you had done it all? Thirty years. We'd be paying it over and over again. I rest my case. There you have it. She rests her case. <laughs> <laughs> that's Gloria, the truth. That's, it is the truth. It is the truth. 
And we need to, and this is what we're talking about on the broadcast these two weeks, we need to develop a, a mentality, a mindset that we are heirs of God and heirs to God's fortune. Amen. Amen. And it's available to us. That's it's right. ours. It's, that's right. And so many believers do not know that. They don't realize it and they're fighting it tooth and nail. I am an heir of God. Amen. Think of the people that have gotten all <laughs> been out of shape over the prosperity message yeah. being preached. Yeah. Well, they're still just struggling along doing the best they can do and we're living in the blessing. Well, I like what you said. Don't be mad at me because I'm wealthy. That's right. I inherited it. That's right. It's an inheritance. <laughs> uh, I like that too, George. So what we're talking about <clears throat> in this study, and these outlines are available to you on, on kcm.org. All, the, all they have to do is go to the website, look for the picture of Glory and Me, click onto it. It'll take you over to the outlines and you can download all of these outlines plus the extra material that we have provided. I put, I put an article by you, an article by Kenneth, an article by me. All of this is available to you absolutely free. Amen. So we want to make that. We've so far on the series that we've done on prosperity, 130, this is day 132. Wow. We have had you all download 335,000 of these awesome. outlines. Hallelujah. Wow. And, wow. And you'd, you would be honored if the pastors would preach it. Preach if it. They want to. Preach it. Print it. Glory to God. Give it to whoever you want to. Hallelujah. The purpose of our study is threefold, to renew our minds and to see ourselves as heirs of God. That's the first point. Second one is to discover what exactly is included in your inheritance. Yeah. I, I know that's important. I know it's important at the reading of a will. When people are all gathered together, they, they, they want to know what's, what's in that will. That's right. And then the third point, we'll get to this later on next week. We're going to be talking about how to learn how to take that inheritance. Amen. How do we receive it? We, <coughs> excuse me, we talked yesterday about a man that was frozen under a railway, died in abject poverty, and did not realize that he was heir to a $300 million fortune. Went through his life, a, didn't a know, a pauper, and didn't realize and did not know that he was an heir of God. Well, how many Christians do that? Yeah, oh, a lot. You know, <coughs> Ken and I, we, we didn't, uh, I married Kenneth in his notes. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And that was just a way of life, you know. You, if you yeah. were going to get a car, you'd borrow money for it. If you were going to get a suit, you'd charge it. And... Uh, so when, but, you, but we had heard Brother Hagen, and we knew that we were supposed to do what the Word says. We were just yeah. real new, but yeah. we, we'd gotten that message. So one day, I was, and you, most of you heard me tell this before, but one day I was just reading, doing my daily reading, and I came across that scripture that says, keep out of debt. Romans 13, I think that's eight. the amplified that's version. It. Keep yeah. out of debt. Yeah. And I thought, man, we're sunk. <laughs> what are, how will we ever have a house? That's right. How will we ever have a car? You borrowed money for everything. You charged yeah. your clothes, you know, everything. at the, and, not, and that was like before MasterCard. There wasn't much American Express or anything like right, that. Right. You, you had an account at the department store in the old days. And I thought, what will we do? What will we do? But we said, okay, we're going to do whatever we see in the Word. So we said, we're, gonna, yes. we're not going to borrow yes. any more money. We're going to get out of debt. And we're not even going to think about the future. About you know, right. We're just going to do that right. one step right. at a time. And uh, within 11 months, we were out of debt. We paid off every debt. And I don't know from there, I don't know how, how it went, but you know, we lack for nothing. That's now. right. You never borrowed. No, we never, never borrowed again. And uh, it's just... It was just an awesome thing. What we'd still be in debt only it'd probably be about three hundred thousand dollars by now, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well and just the, just on this building, the, the main building that we have here, had we borrowed the money to uh, build that building, yeah. we'd still be paying on it right now. How many times over? Oh. Was it worth exercising faith for? 
It was, absolutely. You know, Kenneth has said this. He said, borrowing is a replacement covenant. Uh, it's yeah. going to the yeah. world instead yeah. of going to God. You have to, to make a covenant to borrow. If you, you go really to the bank, you've got to sign some papers. It is. It's the umbilical cord, he says, to the Babylonian system. It's the I umbilical that. cord to that system. That. And, and being able to walk debt-free and having the awareness that I am an heir yeah. of God. Yeah. And, th and that makes all things possible. It does. You don't have to look at your bank account and it see, does. do I have enough money? You've got enough faith. It lifts if you. If you've been feeding on the Word of God. If you've been and feeding you've been on the Word. It and you're saying the right words. Yes, yes. The faith is there ready to come out. That's right. To pay the, for the car, to pay That's for right. the house. You just have to yield to it. Developing an heir of God mentality. Amen. It'll lift you up. It will make all things <clears throat> possible. It will. It will. Let's take a look at Galatians. And, and it's the, it comes in the blessing with no curse. Oh, that's when good. When you believe God. The blessing maketh rich. Yeah. He and he adds, adds no, no sorrow, sorrow. Or you could say no curse. No curse to it. Glory to God. Praise God. I like that. Let's take a look at Galatians chapter 4. And in this session today, we're just going to simply be talking about we are heirs of God. And you need to make a determined decision today that you call yourself an heir of God. Gloria, say this after me. I I'm am. I'm right now. Oh, I sorry. am. <laughs> what you working on there, I'm Gloria? I'm taking a note here. Okay. Say, so I am. I am. An heir of God. An heir of God. And you know, tomorrow we're going to be talking about being joint heirs. Amen. That's exactly Jesus. right. Hallelujah. But I'm an heir of God. You say that out loud. I am an heir of God. Hallelujah. Does something on the inside. Take a look at this in Galatians 4, 4. It says, But when the fullness of the time was got come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them who were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons... God has sent mm -hmm. forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir yes, of God through Christ. Glory to God. That's good, George. You said this, Gloria, and this, this really was the inspiration for these two weeks. It was an article that you wrote in a... a a April 1996 edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory. 96. And one of the things that Gloria said was, I became heir to a fortune mm -hmm. more than 40 years ago in Little Rock, Arkansas, when I gave my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. At that moment, I was born again into the richest family ever known. That's the truth. I was born into the royal family that owns and operates the universe. I received an inheritance so vast it will take me all of eternity to fully comprehend it. You know, most of the partners have heard me say this, but there's <clears throat> probably some new people out there. When I, when I hear that, I mm -hmm. think about where I was that day. Yeah. I mean, it's indelible in my thinking. Yes. We had rented a, a, or leased a house, a little house in a nice right. area. Right. And we didn't have anything to put in it. We didn't have any furniture but we could make the payments on the house. So we're going to get all this furniture and stuff. You know how that is. And uh, I, was, uh, I was praying that day, and I had seen, and reading my Bible, and I would seen, we'd already said we're going to stay out of debt. Yeah. We knew, I mean, no, we'd yeah. already said we're going to do what the Word says. Right. That's how far we were. Right, right. We'd learned that. And so then I'm just minding my own business, reading the Amplified Bible one day in that little house in Tulsa, rent house. And I saw the scripture, keep out of debt. I think that's what the Amplified says, keep out of debt, yeah, stay, out, stay of debt. out of debt. And I thought, <clears throat> bummer. <laughs> how, how would you get anything? You yeah. know, that was just the way of life. Yeah. And it still yeah. is for a lot of people. Yes, it is. But back there then, it was a way of life for most people. You charge things at the individual stores right. instead of having a right. MasterCard, you know. Right. And... Uh, and that was what came to me. But I'd already made the commitment to that I'll do whatever I see in the Word of God. And instead of tying me up, it turned me loose. It, 
<laughs> all things became possible. That's good, Gloria. Instead, Instead of just what you up, it turned me loose. Yes, I like that. I'm, I'm, I never said that before. <laughs> write that I'm down. writing it down. But it's true. Yeah. But I didn't know it at the time, but I was obeying God and what I saw in the Word. And uh, so from there on, when we needed anything big, huge, little, we believed God. And it wasn't overnight. Yeah. But when yeah. you buy a house on credit, it takes about 40 years it to does pay take, it off. It does take It's that. not overnight either. That's right. But this way, if you'll just hang in there and do what the Word says and don't let, be, and be patient. Let patience have her perfect yes. work. You yes. can do anything and, financially and what or happened, in any other way. What happened to you that day that you discovered that scripture? You began to develop that mentality that you were an heir of God. Yeah. Stood and that God would provide you with that house or whatever, the airplanes that were needed for this ministry, whatever. Oh, heck, I wasn't thinking about airplanes. I was <clears throat> thinking about a refrigerator. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, I didn't have a yeah. refrigerator. Yep. Yeah. Food on the back porch when it was cold. I mean, <sighs> I, it's just awesome. But the deal is just what you say, that yeah. whatever it is, yes. God can do it. He can do it. If you'll give him faith to work with. Because we are heirs of God. That's an right. heir is one who receives an inheritance by right of birth. Something belongs to us. Something, <laughs> something belongs to them. <laughs> yeah. And I read this scripture, Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And last year at the Believers Convention, Jesse Duplantis, I mean, all the speakers just stir me up. Mm -hmm. But Jesse got on there and he started talking about his daughter and his granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And he said, my daughter and granddaughter will be taken care of for the rest of their lives simply by right of birth. They're heirs. They're heirs. Amen. And Gloria, that just really, that got me thinking about this. That got me started developing once again that heir mentality, yeah. being an heir of God. And Jesse, who is a human being, saying, my daughter and my granddaughter, yeah. I am building and amassing a fortune for the two of them. That's exactly the way the Father mm -hmm. sees us. Mm -hmm. Well, think about the blessing and the curse. The blessing, uh, Abraham got the blessing and he was to pass that blessing down. Yes, yes. And that blessing that wasn't just words, it was substance. It, it was, was substance. everything good. Yes. And then the next generation was to pass it down. Yep. And that's what, that's what the blessing is. That's what the blessing is. I mean, our children <clears throat> shouldn't have to start over in poverty like we did. That's right. That's because right. Because we know about the blessing. We know. We now do that, know. That irks a lot of people. But it's because you haven't tried it because you'd like it. And it's you, part of my inheritance. It. it belongs to us. It belongs it's to us. It's the blessing. You know, in Deuteronomy 28, if you've never studied it, you can come up with a lot of insight. Right. He says, if you'll do these things, you'll be essentially, this is a short verse, you'll, you do these things and you'll be blessed. And he gives all the blessings, yeah. blessings yeah. in the city, blessings in the field, blessing here, blessing here. If you don't do these things, if you don't obey the word of God, the curse is out there. See, That's the right. curse is That's there. Right. I mean, we were under the curse when we found out about the blessing. But the blessing got us out from under the Praise curse. God. And because of increase and yes. healing, not just money, but health. Increase. It's all part, it's all part of that inheritance. That's right. It belongs to it. Gloria, in Christ Jesus, if you've made Jesus. Jesus the Lord of your life. I was watching, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Because, yeah. I'm going to repeat this again, the reason it's available to all of us if yeah. we're in Christ Jesus is because Jesus himself took the curse and redeemed us from the curse That's right. so that we could live under the blessing. In the Old Testament, there's the blessing, there's the curse and the blessing, but it's not spiritual blessing. Yep. It's material. But in the New Testament, it's the, it's the, cur the, the curse is still working, but the blessing belongs to us the because Jesus himself yeah. took the curse. You, you said something in that article that I read. You said, I was born into the royal family that owns and operates the universe. That's right. So I want you to look at, in the last few moments of our broadcast, look at 1 Peter chapter 1. We are heirs by birth. Yes. 
in the same way that George Pearson's and Elaine Pearson's were the heirs of the Horace and Chessie Pearson's, that's estate, that yes. was my parents. Passed to you. That was passed to us in the same way that the George and Terry Pearson's estate. Did you work for that? <clears throat> I really didn't. Who did work for that? My mother and father. Okay. Did we work for the blessing? No, ma'am. Who did work for the blessing? That was Jesus. Jesus. He took the curse. He took the curse. Oh, you're so good. We Lord. could this live in the really blessing. Good. Glory to God. Praise God. And it's, we enter our inheritance simply by birth. I was thinking about uh, Prince William and his wife, mm -hmm. and last year they had a baby. And I was so excited about this. They that named him sweet. after me. Yeah. Yes, yes, they did. George. Prince George. But well. I was looking at the, the news coverage of Prince George and looking at him on the picture on the cover of People magazine and all these mm -hmm. magazines, you know. And I thought to myself, there's going to be a day that that child wakes up and goes, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look, and I'm heir. That child is heir to the throne. But then you said, <clears throat> I was born into the royal family. That's right. That's right. We were born again. The royal family. The family of the Father. And it says in 1 Peter 1, uh, 3 and 4, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His abundant mercy, mm -hmm. has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, to an inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. Incorruptible. Incorruptible. Undefiled. Undefiled. That does not fade away and it's reserved in heaven for us. Glory to God. It's ours. It is ours. We are heirs of God. Praise God. And we became heirs by royal birth. Or well, we're you could, still in the earth, we became heirs. Yes. Yes. And it only gets better from here. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Amplified Bible of that says... You know, we, we've just, uh, even if you're very prosperous in the earth, you've just begin to, oh. begun to touch prosperity. Just scratch your driveway's surface. not gold yet. <laughs> that's right. And your house might that's not exactly be a right. mansion, but we're there. That's right. Glory to God. The we, Amplified... And it just gets better when we leave. We, we just... The we just keep the going higher of the and higher. Is manifest. Amplified Bible. It says, be, "We were born anew into an inheritance which is beyond yeah. the reach of change." Yes, I mean. The NIV. He's given us new birth into an inheritance. Amen. And I'll just finish it up with this: this last statement, in Christ Jesus, we are heirs to the vast fortune of our loving heavenly Father, simply by being born. This is the 133rd day of prosperity with Pastor George Pearsons, and he is here to keep going. I don't, we don't know how long we're going to go, but we're going to keep going. How many days it'll be? I don't know. But, but the Lord just keeps revealing good stuff to he him. He does. It's just endless, isn't it? The, it is. in, the information, the revelation of prosperity I like it. and I like what it. he wants to do in our lives, it just keeps going and going. There's no question. <clears throat> about it. It is the Lord's will for us to prosper no always. Question. That's right. That's the way it was in the Garden of Eden. That's right. It was the, God's will for them to have an abundance of everything. Yes, ma'am. They blew it, but it was still His will. <laughs> Let's not blow it. We're not blowing <laughs> it. We're taking it. We're taking it. Hallelujah. Well, we, first of all, let me, uh, let me read this quick testimony okay, to you. Okay, good. I love those. Prosperity testimony that came to us. And you, you be sure to send us your testimonies. Yeah. This really blessed Gloria it and me. It blesses us. We know. And this one's very short. It says, Dear Pastor George and Gloria, when Saul was troubled, he called David to come and play the harp. In the same way, when my mind is troubled, I watch you on TV. <laughs> I got to think about that for a minute. <laughs> Isn't, Isn't that, that good? an honor? It really is. Glory to God. I like that. It really that. is. Yeah, but now here's the deal. Don't wait till you're troubled. No, don't. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because you can stay up stay, all the time yes. on the Word of God. Yes, up. yes, yes. Keep up. That's good. Hallelujah. Gloria, we're talking about being heirs of God. How exciting could that we be? We have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Yes, we and do. And it is...
Well, Billy uses this biblical word, magnifical. Magnifical. <laughs> and yes. I like the way she says it, magnifical. And that's what God's inheritance is. Yeah, It's right. over, above, beyond, beyond <laughs> what we have ever experienced that's in right. our lives. That's right. Amen. And to quote Gloria Copeland, don't be mad at me because I'm wealthy. I inherited it. I did. <laughs> you I'm in, did. I'm, a, I'm an heir. You're an heir. I'm a joint heir. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. You say, well, I, I, I haven't, you know, reached that place. Well, I'm not talking about, I'm not just talking about in the natural, in the yeah. supernatural. We get yeah. in the supernatural when we get in God. That's right. And uh, you begin to believe God for what you need, whether it's a uh, car, a house, a healing, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. And, and you, as an heir, these things will manifest if you do what? If you take it by faith. Now, and you know, that includes not just prayer, but that includes talking. Yeah. You can't keep yeah. talking the Correct. problem. You can't keep talking lack and experience the blessing. You have to talk the blessing. You say, well, I don't know much about it. Well, that's why we have the Bible. Glory to God. And there are good, good things to read. Ken's got some good things on the blessing. We've all got that on the blessing and the scripture's full of it. You right. should see just the right. notes and the margin of my Bible. <laughs> we need to show those. You should just see all those That's things. Amazing. Ah, revelation. Revelation from God. I study the word every day. Do you? Yes, ma'am. Every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Every day. Read it first thing in the morning. Is it something I've read before? I've read yes. it before. Do yes. I need it again today? I yes. need it again today. Amen. Amen. Go for it, George. We have all of these notes available online. All you have to do is go over to the website and to click on the picture of Glory and Me, and all of these notes are available to you, yes. plus other materials that we Praise make God. in printed form that you can download and study this. You can download them now and study them, and <clears throat> when they watch the broadcast, they can have these notes right in front of them with us. Isn't that us. great? And you can make your own notes and you can go ahead and, and use these to teach others. And That's right. Perhaps you have a Sunday school class or you're a pastor. Feel free. Right. Use God. it. Use it. George, we receive that as a gift from the Lord and we believe you receive a hundredfold Amen. of revelation Amen. because you sowed this to all of us and told <laughs> yes. us to use it. Take it. Do it. That's right. Glory to That's God. Right. That's awesome. Thank Gloria, you very much. Gloria, this series was an inspiration from an article that you wrote in a 1996 Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, broadcast uh, magazine mm -hmm. called Receive Your Inheritance. And I read that and <clears throat> I began to dissect it, look into it, look up the scriptures, and now we're studying it. Praise God. And it's taking two weeks two to study. Weeks. One article There's that Gloria Copeland <laughs> wrote. And let's review a couple of things first of all. We talked yesterday about being heirs of God. And we use Galatians 4, 6, and 7. It says, because you are sons, God has sent forth His Son, the Spirit of His Son, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, than an heir of Amen. God through Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Isn't that good? We're heirs. Gloria, you wrote in your article, I became heir to a fortune more than 40 years ago in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hallelujah. You remember that time? I remember that time, buddy. Believe me. When you gave your life to Jesus. At that moment, you said, I was born again into the richest family ever I known. i tell you I was. I was born into the royal family that owns and operates the universe. Glory to God. There I was <clears throat> with nothing but a rollaway bed and a metal table Ken made it. <laughs> so it, it was sad. rented. It was rented, the rollaway bed. Oh, man. And a, rented, and a table Ken made in high school shop yep. and a black and white TV. Of course, everybody's TV was black and white in those yep. days. But ours yep. only had a picture about this high. <laughs> it went all the way across <laughs> yeah. and it, it wouldn't change. You couldn't get it to go up. It's just, there I was. But then you said, I received an inheritance so vast. Oh, man. It'll take all of eternity to fully That's comprehend it. We've been born again mm -hmm. into the royal family of heirs, as heirs to our Father's heirs and joint kingdom. heirs. Glory so to God. 
we learn from 1 Peter 1, 3, and 4, we are heirs by birth. One translation says he's caused us to be born again mm -hmm. to an inheritance, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, <clears throat> kept in Amen. heaven for you. Glory to God. So that's what we have. But it'll so, manifest in the earth. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. It's reserved for yeah. us, but it'll manifest in the earth if it, we exercise <clears throat> faith. That's right. That's exactly Ask right. Ask me how I know. I know because we've done it. How do you know? I'm healed. I'm well. I'm prosperous. Praise God. I'm sound minded. I don't feel like I'm as old as I am. My youth's <laughs> renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> no, not at all. Good. Not at all. Okay. So we learned yesterday that we are heirs of God. Today, Gloria, we want to talk about now being joint heirs with Ooh, Jesus. Yes. Amen. I like that. That's Turn. Big. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> and look at with me verse um, 14 through 17. We're going to be learning today about being joint heirs with Jesus. Think about that. I mean, you've got to get the revelation of that, the mentality of that. I am an heir of God, but I'm also a joint heir mm -hmm. with Jesus. If you're born again. <clears throat> if you're born again. And that's what it all hinges on. That's right. Is the new birth. The new birth makes you born into that royal family. That's right. Hallelujah. It's a fact. So, Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, <clears throat> they are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. Praise and if children, here we go now, verse 17, right, and it. if children, then heirs. Heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus, if so be that we suffer with them, that we may also be glorified together. Glory to God. Who is it that owns all the cattle on a thousand hills? My God owns all the cattle on the and thousand hills. And all the hills. silver and gold buried All there. the silver Glory and gold. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My father is, as Kenneth says. He owns the real estate, too. He does own the real it's estate. It's all his to give. Kenneth Hallelujah. says that my father loves me and he's rich, rich, it, rich. Yes, he is. Glory <laughs> to God. So it says here, he, the Father has it all. He has access, owns it all. And then this says that we're joint heirs. Joint with heirs. Joint heirs with Him. Glory to God. That is that an means astounding. we own it all. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. If children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint mm -hmm. heirs with Christ. Now, Praise I looked God. up that word joint heir in the Greek, Gloria, and it means one who is in union together with an inheritor. I like that. <clears throat> One who's in union together with an inheritor. And I thought about this as a good example. Terry and I, because we are married, we are one together. Mm -hmm. On that beautiful evening in August of 1977, when we were married, we became one. That's right. Earlier that day, whatever I had in my checkbook was mine. Whatever she had in hers was hers. But that night, when we were married, everything changed. <clears throat> everything changed. It all, we merged. That's right. Everything merged. That's the miracle of marriage. That every everything becomes one. And that's why Paul talked about the marriage union and liking it to Christ uh -huh. and the, the church. church. Yes. Uh -huh. Fused together. That's well, right. Terry and I were fused together. When my, my dad passed away first and then my mother a few years later. After my mother passed away, my sister and I discovered what a good investor my mother was. And we were so pleased. Didn't, know. <clears throat> didn't quite know everything that she had invested in. And... So the time came when the inheritance was being given out. And so I received my portion of the inheritance. 
But Terry and I were joint heirs mm -hmm. together because when that came in, I didn't hold on to it and say, Terry, this is mine, that's not yours. No, we're one yeah, together. That's right, that's good. So that inheritance, because we were joint heirs, we both received everything because we're one. Praise God. Now think about this. In the Amplified Bible, if we are, are His children, then we are heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing His inheritance with Him. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? Joint heirs. Joint heirs with, with Jesus. Jesus. I like the New Living Translation. Together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Isn't that good? Wow. Ooh, I like that too. Wow. <clears throat> so we, we need to develop a mentality and understanding that we are joined together with Jesus. We are joined. We are in joined Christ. Heirs. Yeah. We are in Christ. He is in us and everything he has belongs to us. Uh, let's read a couple of scriptures. Go to page two, Gloria, on your notes there. Okay. And in Ephesians chapter two, verses six and seven, in the Amplified Translation, it says this, he's raised us up together with him, made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him. Now notice that phrase, joint seating. We are, we are joined with him. In the heavenly sphere, by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus. The more we know, Gloria, <clears throat> who we are right. in Christ Jesus, the more we will have a revelation of that inheritance that belongs to us. From the time you were born again, you were a joint heir. Yes. But you didn't partake of the inheritance exactly. until you found out that it exactly. belonged to you, which you got out <clears throat> of the Word of God. And then you began to partake of your yes. inheritance. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. And I'm still learning. Me too. I'm still, we have not yet plumbed the depths no. of all that belongs to us. That's right. You know, we are, here we are in 2014. And that sounds like a space <laughs> I know it does, doesn't it? <clears throat> and Brother Copeland received a word from the Lord about this year. This is the year of victory over death Praise God. and manifested love. Glory to well, God. Well, we're learning more. We're learning more and more and more about what is ours, yes. what belongs to us. One of, our, one of the inheritance points that we have, we have victory over death. Amen. We don't have anything to fear. There. We have nothing to fear. If we're in Christ Jesus. Well, we've been given joint seating with him by virtue of our being in Christ, he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages and to come, for the ages to come, the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace. When did we get victory over death? I'm talking about when did you, when did I? We got victory over death when we received Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives. That's exactly right. And we right. were born over again. It was all From out. death, yes. which came because yes. of Adam's sin, into life. We got a new birth. Yes. You know, people think that's just a term, a religious term. No, that happened. You yep. were born over again. Born over again. And you came from death had a dead spirit into having a life spirit That's right. in Christ Jesus. That's right. And if you got in the Word then after that happened, yeah. everything changed. And I like what Kenneth said one time. He said, when you were born again, Jesus moved in That's right. with everything That's he has. Right. You're instantly born over again. Yeah. But if you don't find out what the Bible says, you stay a baby. Now, if you've got babies in your family, oh, that's so true. you know they can't produce anything good. They have diapers that you have to change and all that, but they're not out there producing. Well, that's the way it is with, with babies in the, in the church. Right. Right. If, if you never, in fact, I was born again for a good while before I began to learn anything. The same here. And, uh, yeah. and so nothing happened supernaturally. Right. But when I got in the Word and I began to act on it, say it, believe we receive it, talk it, things begin to change. The light 
And things still coming. change when yep. I apply the yep. Word of God. <clears throat> Glory to God. And we, His inheritance, it says here, it's immeasurable. Mm-hmm, that's right. That's it's a good way to say it. It's limitless. And it's surpassing. Anything else. Amen. Let's take a look at this in the last few minutes of this okay. broadcast. These go by so quickly, Gloria. I know. Hebrews Fast. chapter 1. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. We are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. We need to receive everything that belongs to us. And I found, I found something in Hebrews 1 that just startled me. And in Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. That's what it says. Woo! Glory to God. Heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So we find here that Jesus is heir of all things. Glory of this Amplified Translation, listen to what it says. Who appoint, he was appointed heir and lawful owner. That's the Amplified. So he had it to give. He's got it all. Glory to God, hallelujah. New Living Translation, God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance. Gloria, he has it all. He is. He has it all, now listen. King Jesus. Let me, read, let me read through these scriptures and, right. and get this, I'll get this thought out. Romans 8, 29 says this, For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to be like His Son, so that His Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. He's the firstborn. We are the second, third. The jillionth, whatever. The jillionth, whatever it is. <laughs> there were such a word. And then in Colossians 1, 18, He's the head of the body. We're in a big family. We've got a huge family. He's the head of the body, the Mm -hmm. church. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So we establish here that we are part of the family. Amen. Secondborn, thirdborn, fifthborn, jillionth born. Now, (laughs) we just read in, in Hebrews 1, he's the heir of all things. So let me present this statement to you. And this is number four there in in your notes, um, section C. If Jesus is the heir of all things and we are joint heirs with him, that makes us heir of all things. That's right. We have inherited everything that Jesus has inherited. And the scripture says we are raised to sit with him we're raised in, to heavenly, in places. heavenly places. Glory to God. This we are, true. Gloria, we are joint heirs with Jesus. Who owns everything. Who owns everything. He's the <laughs> lawful owner of everything. And I'll Glory read it to you to one God. more time. If Jesus is the heir of all things. And he is. And we are, and he is. And we are joint heirs with him. That makes us heirs of all things Amen. as well. Praise God. Isn't that magnificent? Amen. That's great. Isn't George. that tremendous? Amen. So how do you get that manifest? By faith. By faith. You take the word of you God, take put it in your eyes, in your ears, God. get oh, it in your heart, yes. and say it with your mouth. You can't keep saying the yes, wrong yes, thing yes. and expect manifestation of the good goodness of God and the blessing of God supernaturally. That's right. You have Lord. to get your your mind, your thoughts, your eyes and your mouth, your heart and your mouth in line with the Word of God and say what it says in Jesus' name. And you will begin to enjoy, have it in your life, whatever is promised in the Word of God. We're still in prosperity. We're going to be in prosperity all the days of our life in the earth. And then if we know Jesus, we're going to really be in prosperity. That's right. Oh, Think about man. my driveway oh. being gold yeah. up there. In front of my mansion yeah. is a gold driveway. It's beautiful Ooh, there. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. And we should have days of heaven on earth, shouldn't we? As, according experience, to the Bible, we can yeah. experience days of heaven on That's the earth. That's right. And That's I believe right. in that. Yeah, Amen. I do too. Glory, because I've been redeemed from the <clears throat> curse. Poverty is, is not an issue. 
Sickness is not an issue. That's right. Jesus himself That's right. bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases. And by his Praise stripes, God. I was healed. And it also says, if you have this in your notes, I'm going to say it first. He redeemed us from the curse. That's right. Which means the curse of poverty, curse of sickness. Every bad thing you find under Preach the it. curse, I've been redeemed from it. Man, oh man. Through Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, you've preached me I'm happy. I'm free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, free from the curse. Praise God. Well, Gloria, we're talking about being heirs of God Amen. on these broadcasts. And the inspiration came from an article that you wrote in the Believer's Voice of Mag Victory magazine years ago, 1996, nice. called Receive Your Inheritance. Praise God. And uh, that article, by the way, is available on uh, kcm.org. You can, you can look it up on our website, get a copy of it yourself, as well as all of these notes. All of these notes from the series that we're doing are available on, on kcm.org. Just go to the picture of Glory and me smiling at you, click onto it, <laughs> And it'll take you right to all of the notes God, that you can download, print, study. That is very generous. Print of them you. out, give them. You know, pastors, you could have a series in your church on being heirs of God, receiving your inheritance in Christ, and make duplicate copies and just give them to all the members of your church and have them follow along with Praise the notes. God. We just want to get this word out. Amen. As, That's in, right. In, in, in as many ways as we possibly can. And by the way, this well, we is appreciate this. from our whole series that we've been doing these last three years on prosperity, day 134. Hallelujah. George, it's been We've done awesome. a lot together. You have given us so much revelation on prosperity, and we take it in and, Jesus' name. And just before we went on the air, I thought about two things. I wrote this down, something that you said at the first of the week concerning our inheritance in Christ. Don't be mad at me because I'm rich. I inherited it. That's right. <laughs> That's I'm what you heir. said at the first of the week. You're an heir. We're an heir. You're and in then, Christ Jesus. You're an heir. Hallelujah. Just before we went on the air, this came to me and I wrote it down. The great thing about our inheritance in Christ, you don't have to contest the will. That is the truth. It's and, been settled. And it doesn't have to go through probate. That's right. It's ours right now. Glory to God. It's a done deal. So let's review a couple of things, Gloria. Okay. Um, first of all, we looked at Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, which means my father loves me. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. Hallelujah. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Praise God. We established, first of all, Gloria, that we are heirs of God. We are heirs. And as you wrote in your article, you said, I became heir to a fortune more than 40 years ago in Little Rock, Arkansas, when I gave my life to Jesus. You should have seen. You should have been there. <laughs> I should have been there. <laughs> oh, man. At oh, that moment, you said, I was born again into the richest family ever known. Yes. I was born into the royal family, the royal family that owns and operates the universe. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I received an inheritance so vast, it will take me all of eternity to fully comprehend it. That's right. And we found out from the Greek that the word heir is one who receives an inheritance by birth, mm -hmm. by sonship, and we've been born again into the royal family. Hallelujah. That as heirs to our Father's kingdom. You could say that I receive by desperation. <laughs> <laughs> I receive by desperation. You no, know, we live. No. Everybody knows this story, but you, you had to be there to yep. really appreciate it. Yep. Nothing in the house. Nothing. No stove, no refrigerator, an electric skillet. I, I picture that. No, no, it was potatoes in a coffee pot. That's where I cooked potatoes. And you kept a your... A roll rented roll-away bed. Rented. Uh, a metal table Ken made in high school. A couple of lawn chairs I got from my mother's web kind, you know, that fold oh, yeah. up. Yeah. Convenient. See. <laughs> and uh, a television, black and white television. Yeah. Which, that wasn't bad back there then because there wasn't any color. 
But our little TV was about this big, and it had a picture like this. It went all the way across like Those that. Those Beverly Hillbillies just that stood about it. that was it, and the Beverly TV. Hillbillies were new. And your food was outside on the porch in a box. Yeah, when it was winter When it time. was winter time. That's right. Gloria, you, you have been redeemed. But I got over it. Praise oh, God. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> help me. And you learned about being who you are in Christ, yeah. what your inheritance is, and 1 Peter 1, 3, and 4 tells us basically that we are heirs by birth. So, the new birth. if the new birth, if you are born again, yeah. that means that you are an heir of God the to blessing the kingdom. belongs to you yes. if you're born again. That's right. That's how you get in line for the blessing. That's right. You make Jesus the Lord of your life, and He bore the curse for you, which you read about in Deuteronomy. Everything bad's under the curse, yeah. lack, sickness, yeah. everything bad. He bore the curse. You know, you need to know what's in, under the curse so you understand all the good <clears throat> stuff that's in yeah. the blessing. Yeah. He bore it for us so that we might walk in the blessing. Yes. One is everything yes, yes. bad, the other is everything, everything good, good <laughs> and it's because Jesus is Lord that we get in on. I in was on. with Billy uh, last year in Israel, and we looked at the Mount of Blessing and the Mount of Cursing. Yes. We were right there looking at those two mountains where those were the declared. Now we look at Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. The blessing, 1 through 14, and then 15 through the end of the chapter is the curse of the law. If you turn down the blessing... <clears throat> Then what's left? The curse. That's right. Ooh, whew, got that right. <laughs> <laughs> then, okay, so we learned that we are heirs of God. Then, Gloria, we looked at Romans chapter 8. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verses uh, 14 through 17, and it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You've not received the spirit of bondage again yeah, to fear. that's great but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby Grace, we cry, Abba, Father, Father, Father my, my Father, Father loves oh, me. Hallelujah. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the Amen. children of God. You know, I was thinking about that and thought about my own parents that whenever Terry and I would go to New England to visit my parents, take the kids with us, mm -hmm. it would be summertime or winter, sometimes both, Christmas or summer, uh, <clears throat> and I would walk on the drive on the property. They had about 15 acres of land and beautiful home. And I would walk into that home and I had a sense that I was the son. I would kick my shoes off. I'd go to the kitchen. Yeah, make yourself at home. Make myself at home. Not too many people could do that, but a son could. Yeah, that's right. And I just had an awareness. That's good. That's a good way to look at it. I had an awareness that I was the heir of Horace and Chessie Pearsons. Not that I wanted them to leave, not that I wanted them to die, but I just had this awareness on the inside and, and a you know, family, that's an awareness family. of family. Yeah. And that we're all in this together, in other words. <laughs> yeah. And that one day, years from now, that this this would belong to my sister and me. And sure enough, that time came and it happened. Not that I desired for it, not no. that I wanted it, but no. it just happened. But we were the heirs. And my mindset changed so much where that was concerned. Well, the more you read the Word, the more you study the Word, the more you have an, an, an inner image, the inner image of being an heir of God. Of what belongs to you. Of what belongs to you. Hallelujah. And it says here in verse 17, if you are children, if you're children of God, if you're born again, then you are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs. What so we word. are not only heirs of God, we are joint heirs together. And we learn that that word joint heir from the Greek is we are in union yeah. together with the inheritor. Amen. We're joint uh -huh. heirs with the anointed one, Christ. We are joint heirs one. with the anointed one Glory and his Glory to anointing. God. Hallelujah. The New Living Translation says, together in Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Oh, wow. I like that. Wow. 
And we read several scriptures, Ephesians 2, 6, he raised us up together with him. He made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with Glory him. Glory to God. Now, where was that, Ephesians? That's, that's Ephesians 2, 6, and 7. That's great. And it goes on to say, so that he may clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his grace and favor. Praise God. So the through inheritance. The ages. This is the through the age ages. Yeah. Period. Yeah. But then there are ages right. after. Ages this. and ages to so come. So we're just preparing now for what for the ages to come. And we can, in this age that we're in, partake of our inheritance, all that belongs to us. Amen. Because we are heirs of God and joint heirs That's with right. Jesus. Amen. I received that. Now, yesterday. We looked at Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. I'll read it to you. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. God, who had sundry times and in divers manners spoken times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. And we are heirs of him. We are joint heirs. We are heirs of God, mm -hmm. joint, joint heirs, heirs with Jesus. Jesus is heir of all things. So, and I wrote this down, if Jesus is heir of all things and we are joint heirs with Jesus, yeah. we must be heirs of all things as we well. We must be. We are. <clears throat> Hallelujah. That's good, isn't it? So today, I just want to talk about the fact that we can go back to Galatians chapter 4. We're heirs of everything. Amen. We are heirs of of everything that the Father has in His kingdom. If we're in the body of Christ. If we are in the body of Christ. That's right. If we are born again, then we're heirs of everything. When, <clears throat> when my parents passed away, I became the heir of everything. My sister and I became the heir of everything they had, the house, the land the cars, the finances, nothing was left out. That's right. At the reading of the will. Because you were heirs. <clears throat> because we were heirs. At the reading of the will, they didn't go through it and say, now, this is not yours, this is not yours. No, according to the will. And I have a copy of my parents' will. According Amen. to that will, everything belonged to us. Well, according to this will, Mm -hmm. This is the will of God. Everything in the will of God, everything, everything belongs to us. Praise God. Gloria, when I came to Texas, actually it was before that, when I was at ORU, Terry and I were dating. We got engaged. I met you and Kenneth. Kenneth sent me every cassette tape he had. <laughs> it, back then it was called the... Uh, the uh, Believer's Bible Course. Yeah. Uh, there was a basic Believer's Bible Course and then the, belie the advanced mm -hmm. course. He sent me everything. On cassette. I, my mind was being renewed to things that I didn't know belonged to me. Healing, I did not know it belonged to me because I grew up in a place and in a mindset mm -hmm. that, well, God may have put that on you for some reason. Maybe that's his will. No, when I got here, I found out the will of God. Praise God. It was God's will. And your book was one of the first books that I read when I got here, God's Will for You. In that book is a chapter called God's Will is Healing. Yes. Gloria, I started reading that, and I found out that his healing power Praise you, Jesus. was mine. That's right. Everything. Everything. Glory to God. And have you been in good health? I've been in good health. <laughs> I've been in good wealth. Yes, I, amen. I have lived a wonderful life. The blessing. It's the blessing. the blessing. It's the blessing. So we're heirs of everything. That's right. And let me read a scripture to you. Galatians, back to Galatians chapter 4. In Galatians 4, it says in verse 7, You are no more a servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Oh, yes. 
I, I was studying this out in preparation for church and for this, and I found this scripture. I was up in Arkansas doing this. I was studying this out up in Arkansas. I was in one of the, the smaller cabin, and I, I just, I can remember sitting at that desk, because <laughs> what I do is I hunker down yeah. in those cabins up there, and I, I dig into the Word. Revelation. I was sitting there when I read the New Living Translation of this scripture, and it startled me. Uh, Listen to it. Which one was it? It's, um, where, where are you? There? Yeah, it's this one right here, uh, this New Living okay. Translation. Since you are his child, everything he has belongs to you. Isn't that, doesn't that say it all? I stood up. Pray. I said, I take that. Yes. I take that. Everything he has belongs to you since you're his child. And you got to be his child by being born over That's again. That's right. That's from right. From death into life, from sin yeah. into the yeah. new birth. And now you're an heir. I'm an heir. A joint heir, it says in the an Bible. An heir and a joint heir. And my inner image of who I am. I woke up this morning. Terry and I say something to each other every morning. It, it's based on the word of the Lord from last year that Kenneth gave. And we, we do this in church and we also do this at home. It, it may be pitch black in the bedroom. But from one side or the other, you'll hear the voice rise up. This is what <laughs> we say. Whoever is the first to wake up. <clears throat> Whoever is the first to say it. And we don't whisper it either. In the dark, we'll say it. I am expecting That's great. my greatest blessing ever today because great grace is upon us all. Isn't that good? We, say it again so everybody can write I it down. am expecting my greatest, greatest blessing, blessing ever today because great grace is upon us all. So you say that before you ever hit the floor. I, it's a great habit. We set the course of our day Amen. by the words that we speak. In the same way that God said, let light be and light was, we declare we are expecting our greatest blessing ever Yes, amen. A World Cup Academy Award never before had blessing. <laughs> we are expecting it every day because... Some people wake up <clears throat> and they say, oh, no, another dumb day yeah. I've got to go yeah. through. But not when you know the Word. Not when you know the Word. You know the truth. And so this scripture... And you walk in the blessing. You walk in this blessing. Since you are his child, since you are his child, everything, everything, everything he has belongs to you. Listen That's to the good. message translation. If you are a child, you're also an heir with complete access to Boy, the inheritance. Is that a good word? Boy. Complete access. Complete access. You, in other words, you don't have to wait till you die. Nope. Nope. There's already been a death <clears throat> that already? got you this inheritance. There was a resurrection after the death, but the inheritance was already bought and paid for. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Glory, Glory to God. Lord. That's good. That's right. And do you know what the inheritance is? The inheritance is the full scope of God's provision. It encompasses everything. It does. Spirit, soul, body, financially, socially. And let me, they've just given me how many minutes? Two minutes. Oh my goodness. Let me just read a couple of things, Gloria. Okay. Ephesians 1, 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us with every, every spiritual, spiritual blessing. blessing in heavenly realms because we are united with That's Christ. Awesome. 2 Peter 3, 4, for his divine power has bestowed upon us, or you could actually say bequeath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word bequeath means to give or leave by a will, used especially of property. His divine power has bestowed or bequeathed unto us all things that are requisite and suited to life Ooh, and all godliness. All things, that leaves nothing out. All things, mm -hmm. all how, things. How does it come? Through? 
through Jesus, through the, the inheritance. Full, through the full, says the full knowledge. Oh, the full, yeah, the full knowledge. Um, personal Personal knowledge. knowledge of Him who's called us by and to His own glory. By means of these, He has bestowed upon us His precious and exceedingly great promises. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness. It, one translation says His divine power has given us everything we need Praise for God. life and godliness. Amen. That's awesome. Our inheritance includes everything we would ever need. Here's two more scriptures because the time is running out. <laughs> Revelation 21, 7, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. Praise God. And then finally, Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all yes, that is within yes, me. Bless yes. his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all, all of his, his benefits. benefits. He forgives our iniquities. He heals our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving Ooh, kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Today, wow. take what a everything Amen. that belongs Amen. to you Amen. in your inheritance because you're an heir of God and a joint heir that is so with good, Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. We're gonna, I'm just gonna look here at our week in review and uh, this is about me, coming from me. I became an heir to a fortune more than 50 years ago in Little Rock, Arkansas, when I gave my life to Jesus. At that moment, I was born again into the richest family ever known. I was in adverse poverty, married to a man who was in it with me, Kenneth <laughs> Copeland. I was born into the royal family at that point. I was born over again to the royal family that owns and operates the universe, mm -hmm. the family of God. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. I received an inheritance so vast it will take me all of eternity to fully comprehend it. Man. That's something. The purpose of our study <laughs> think, is... Think about it. Think about it, as Dad Clark used to say, to renew our minds and see ourselves as heirs of God, to discover what is included in our inheritance. You know, if you don't know it, you can't partake. Mm -hmm. To learn how to take our inheritance. We learn from Galatians that we are heirs of God, from 1 Peter that we are heirs by birth. Yep. We were born into born this. Born into Born again into yes. this inheritance. Yes. Romans 8, 14 through 17 says we're joint heirs with Jesus. You couldn't get any bigger That's than right. that. That's right. Because he has everything. He owns everything. <laughs> Galatians 4 says that. We are heirs in the New Living Translation. We are heirs of everything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we access our inheritance by faith in what God says in his word. That's right. Glory That's to God. That's right. Awesome teaching, George. Praise God. We are talking about being heirs of God. Yes. And let me remind everybody that all of these notes are available on kcm.org. Study them out. Yes, ma'am. And just go to the picture of Glory and Me. Click onto it. These notes, which have been prepared for these daily series, are all printed for you or all together for you. All you have to do is download them. And we also have other materials, an article by you, by Kenneth, by myself. And we want you to get your mind renewed. That's right. That's right. As to being an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus, knowing that you're heirs of everything. And today on the broadcast, Gloria, I want to answer the question, when can we access our inheritance? Good. I when like can it. we when can we access that inheritance? And you know, it's interesting how there have been major wars fought over who gets what. Yeah, that's right. And the, the inheritance that we have in Christ, you know, you know this, sometimes people put it off to heaven. Oh, frequently, yes. When we get to heaven. What, what's there we'll for us? We'll be healed when we get to heaven. We'll be healed when we get to heaven. We'll, yeah. Yeah, and so they... We'll have a nice house when it's, we get to heaven. It's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> It's always in the future. Yeah. It's always out there <clears throat> beyond reach, beyond what we can actually grasp. And people, I read this in a book one time where people get messed up on the tenses, tenses, T-E-N-S-E-S, -E mm -hmm. the tenses, mm -hmm. past tense, present tense, future tense, tense. 
The Usually, they, if they don't know the word, they leave <clears throat> off the middle part. Present. Present tense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's mostly all future tense. Mm -hmm. When can we access our inheritance? The answer is right now. Now. Now is faith the substance of things There you go. For. That's it. The evidence of things, things not, not seen. seen. Glory to God. Now, now we access. Yeah. Now. Amen. And that's important. It is. That's important to realize and to know. Now's when we really need to access. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Ooh, that's yeah. exactly right. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to spend this time on this broadcast today talking about the fact that we are heirs of everything now. now today. Say it. Now. 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 now we are heirs of everything now. So now. let's start with this scripture, Colossians chapter 1. 12 and 13, and it says, we give thanks unto the Father which has, mm -hmm. has made us meet or able, able yeah. to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has uh, delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us from the king translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we see here in this verse, we have two words. The King James says hath. The New King James mm -hmm. says has. Basically, it's saying to us that he has already, already made us able to be partakers of the inheritance right mm -hmm. now. That's right. Glory to God. Right now. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 12, the Amplified Translation, it says, He has qualified us. He has qualified us. He has made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints. Now, we're made fit. We're made fit. By the new birth. Yes, yes. And if you, you might say, well, I've never been born again. Well, you just stick with us and we'll tell you how. Exactly when, right. When, before this is over. <laughs> We don't have to wait for heaven to claim our full inheritance. That's our right. full inheritance to belongs to us now. Now. Amen. I, I would say that that is probably one of the most important words in the Bible. The word now. Now. Faith is the substance yeah. of things yeah. hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Praise God. Now, our inheritance belongs to us now. That's right. Gloria, let's run through some scriptures to okay. do. Let's do a Bible study. All right, let's do it. Let's do a Bible study. Let's look at Acts chapter 20. We'll start there. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts 20, 32. We're talking about our inheritance is now. Acts it belongs 20. to us how, now. There's no probate court. There's no contesting the will. It's yours. Everything that Jesus paid for is yours now. The judge has said, it's yours it's now. It's yours now. Glory to God. It's a ruling. Yes. It's, it's yours ruling. now. It belongs to you. <clears throat> Acts 20, 32. Do you have that there? Mm -hmm, I oh. have it on your notes. Oh, well, read that to us. Acts and 20, now, 30. brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified or that are set apart. Set apart. So yeah. we get this inheritance. It becomes a reality by our spending time in God's Word and learning about it. Yes. And what happens yes. when you spend time in God's Word? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Right. And then you lay hold of it. Faith to Hallelujah. believe it. Faith yeah. to believe. Thank you, Lord. What is... To the natural mind, impossible? Oh, yeah. yeah. To the natural man, how can this happen? How can it be? This inheritance that belongs to us? Thank he, you, Lord. You, you do. You meditate the Word of God on it and becomes a rea reality to you. That's right. If you never know... You, then you receive. You just, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Faith comes. But you have to know what's in the will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to know what's in the will. 
The word builds you up and the word gives you your inheritance. That's what it says. I like the Amplified Bible. You're rightful. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Your rightful inheritance. And one translation simply means, says, the inheritance. Hallelujah. So it belongs to us and it belongs to us right now. That's important. That's important. Let's look at Galatians 4. Galatians 4, 7. And it says, in Galatians 4, 7, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, I like this message translation. It says, if you are a child, you are also an heir. Yeah. With complete access to the inheritance. How did you get to be a child? I received Jesus as my Lord. I was born again. You were born into this inheritance. And it keeps coming back to that, doesn't it, Gloria? Yes. We were were born born into into it. it. Amen. We, we, by, by right of royal birth, the royal family, by right of royal birth, we have been born again into this family. And it cannot be contested. Cannot. I'm it cannot born, be. I've been born into the blessing. And I really like this message translation. <clears throat> if you're a child, if you are a child of God, if you're born again, child of God, you are also an heir with complete access. Oh, don't you like it? Total access yeah. to the inheritance. We don't have to wait till we die. No, we don't. Oh, that's good. No, it? we don't. Glory and we to don't God. have to wait till anybody else dies either. We don't have to die to get it. No, it's we done. Don't. Jesus <laughs> it's done. died to get it for us. Yes. But he didn't stay dead. He did. He was raised from the dead and he got the victory for us. Glory to Seated God. Seated us with him. Yes, that's right. Joint seating in heaven. That's what it says. And now we have this complete access, total and complete access to the inheritance that belongs to us. Amen. Now, next week, we will spend the week talking about two things. One, what our inheritance is, and two, how do we take it? That's what we're going to talk about next week. That'll be great. But right now, you need to know it's yours. Healing is yours now. That's right. Prosperity is yours yes. now. Peace from God is yours yes. now. N O. K N O W E now. <laughs> I was what I just thought about Gloria is when I first came here, first came to Texas. I was we were in Lake Arlington at the office there, and your brothers made such fun of me, oh, Doug and Richard both. Yeah. I was a, I you was were a, a Yankee. I was a Yankee, and I came back to the. You've adapted quite well. I, <laughs> I must say I have. I love y'all. Anyway, no. okay. I came back to the, the duplication room where they made all the tapes and I was looking for granddad, mm-hmm. Kenneth's father, and I went back there and I said, has anybody seen A.W.? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Doug and Richard and the rest, of, they were on the floor laughing at me, W, W, doesn't he know it's W? Sounds just like my brothers. So. The point that I'm making is it belong, your inheritance belongs to you right now. That's right. N-O-W. Now, right now. Now. We're coming to you live We've from Texas. It. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, it says in verse 11. Oh, let's back up to 10. In the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom also we have have obtained an inheritance. Have obtained is past tense. Past tense. We, you could actually say there, we have already Already. obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him that works all things after the counsel of his own Praise will. God. Amen. I like the New Living Translation of that scripture. 
because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. We have received it. You know, it's possible to uh, be an heir of a, of a great fortune. Yeah. And if you didn't know it, you couldn't receive it. You couldn't receive it if I mean, you didn't. You might know have it. done something to some for some just somebody that was a nobody, and something good. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Somebody you didn't even know very well. And your name was in the will. And your name be in the will. Glory to God. And they they either couldn't find you, or you didn't know. Yeah. Or you'd re you'd refuse it. Yeah. And that's what some believers do, or some Christians you do. You have to know what's in the will. <laughs> yeah. And how does faith come? By knowing what's in the will. That's faith right. Faith comes by hearing. That's right. And hearing by the Word of God. Yes. Glory that's to God. That's exactly right. And that's what we're doing in these broadcasts where finances are concerned, where prosperity is concerned. Yeah. And it's working. You know, Make it. I thought this was Kenneth that said it, but then I read it was Brother Hagen that said it, and I thought it was Brother Hagen that said it, and it turned oh, and out to they be both said it. F. F. Boswell that said it. <laughs> Bosworth. Bosworth, and thank you, Boswell. Bosworth, and faith begins where the will of God is known. That's it. That's it. Faith begins it was Bosworth when you know the will of God. And how do you know the will of God? Right there. Man, you right can there. come from anywhere, any situation, yes. any bad place, yeah. and find out the will of God, whether it's healing or finances or believing God for your family. You can find out the will of God and take it, receive it. That's right. Say it. That's right. Believe it and say it. Yes. And you can change any situation. It's ours now. Glory to God. Amen. Ephesians 1.18. It says here, <clears throat> the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know mm -hmm. what is the hope of his calling and know what the riches of the glory of yes. his inheritance in the saints. He wants us to know it so we can enjoy it. We must know it. He's bought it. He's paid for it. Now we have to find <clears throat> out about that and receive it or take it. That's right. The New Living Translation of that scripture I want you to realize what a rich and glorious inheritance has been given to his people. That's it. excellent. That's it right there. That, I mean, that sums it up right there. I want you to realize what a rich and glorious inheritance he has given Praise his people. Praise God. I want you to realize what a rich and glorious inheritance that belongs to you That's the right will now. Of God. That's Amen. the will of God. Glory to God. And this last scripture here, 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Ooh, that's a good one. <clears throat> yeah, let's just read are. it here. Go ahead okay. and read it, Gloria. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. We have an inheritance, yeah. George. Yep. Yeah incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Wow. Glory to God. The inheritance. We, first of all, it says we've been, we've been born mm -hmm. again into this inheritance. Yes. It's incorruptible, undefiled. It doesn't fade away. It's reserved in heaven for us. That's right. Not to be stored there, but to be received the NIV translation says, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, Amen. or fade. Kept for Kept us. Kept for us. Hallelujah. Now look at this. The New Living Translation. We have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure, right. undefiled, Praise beyond God. the reach of change and decay. Glory to God. Everything Jesus paid for as a result of his death, burial, and resurrection is available to us right now. Nothing can change it. Nothing can change it. Not, uh, not uh, depression, not inflation, <clears throat> not political parties, not nothing, this, nothing, not that. Nothing, nothing can change We're it. We're dealing with heaven. It's ours right That's now. That's right. Glory now, to Gloria, God. Now, Gloria, there's a testimony that we want to show. Oh, good. And it's a man named Farrell Kaiser, 
And he was a man that was born in abject poverty. I mean, this, this man, this partner of ours was just, just went from a place of deep poverty, learned the word, came to our... I was pretty neat myself. Me, <laughs> yeah, we all were. <laughs> came to our convention in 1979 in Anaheim, and now this man is walking in the fullness of his inheritance. Oh, right. you, you I want to see, see this. You've got to see this. So take a look at this, and Glory and I will be right back. My name is Farrell Kaiser. I'm from Enterprise, Alabama. I have a wife. Her name's Glenda, two children, Christy and Lee, three grandchildren. I've lived in Southeast Alabama for 58 years. My mother came out of the early days of Pentecost in Southeast Alabama, got saved in 1936. I grew up in deep poverty. My daddy was a sharecropper. He, in later years, he got a job at a sawmill and then worked at a cotton mill in a textile plant. My mother and dad came out of the Great Depression, but the Great Depression never came out of them. And uh, then, so I, being raised in that, they rehearsed it all my life and I heard it till it built those walls inside and developed my thinking into poverty thinking. But in 79, I walked into a Christian bookstore in Dothan, Alabama, and I picked a book up off the bookshelf called The Laws of Prosperity. And I found out, as I studied it, it opened my heart, and I got knowledge of God's Word. And it was by Brother Copeland. I didn't know how to walk into blessing. I didn't know how to believe God by faith for the promises of prosperity. Now, I found out real quick and when I was studying his book that prosperity is not just a lot of dollars. It's the ability to use God's ability to meet the needs of mankind, whatever those needs are, spirit, soul, and body. It took two or three years before the breakthrough came financially. And we, we uh, got our general contractor's license, began to build because we're applying the laws of prosperity. Uh, the business went extremely well, made a lot of money. We were tithers. Brother Copeland taught me that the tithe is the 10%, but tithing's done with the mouth. And so my wife and I, we would take communion and we would uh, tithe our tithe, make our profession of faith over our tithe. And we never spent a dime on advertising, but we'd always do a little bit extra for our customers and they would tell on us. And so, word of mouth, and, and uh, people trusted us, and we gave them no reason not to. And in 1990, I got so busy preaching, I didn't have time to build no more, and I went to a believer's uh, seminar in Birmingham, Alabama at the Boutwell Auditorium, and on Friday night, the Lord spoke to me, said, now's the time to go full-time in the ministry, and we did, and we never looked back. I ministered to the local church. Uh, Two things the Lord spoke to me to major on, and one was faith, and the other was on the, the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Spirit. And we have seen thousands, thousands of people baptized in the Holy Spirit in our meetings uh, over the past 23 years. In the early days when I first listened to Him, when I was driving that wore out yell or pinto, <laughs> I, I, God dropped it in my spirit that we would need an airplane to uh, minister and to keep up with our schedule. I have a um, couple of ministry airplanes and I have a runway in my backyard so I can fly out of my house to just about anywhere. <laughs> we sowed a seed, a sizable seed into a Jewish ministry. 10 months later, received a quarter of a million dollar harvest. We were able to pay off everything we owed. We paid completely out of debt, investment debt uh, and everything. The Lord just put us in real estate and so we purchased uh, land. We have rentals, and I have property in Florida that we finance for people and help them get a home. I'm able to be a blessing because I heard the message of prosperity in 1979, and I've never give up on it. I feed on it every day. That's why I'm out here now. I have, as a partner of Brother Copeland, I am a partaker of his anointing, and that's why I fly. I have an aviation anointing. That's why I have real estate. I have real estate anointed. <laughs> the blessings, because of the anointing attracts it, they, they chase me. <laughs> I slow down and let them catch me. <laughs> I'm living the abundant life. I have joy unspeakable. 
and full of glory. Amen. Rick has done an in-depth, in-depth study of what happened in that time leading up to and including the Garden of Gethsemane all the way through the resurrection. You won't want to miss these special broadcasts. As we discuss, a person's last will and testament reveals all that will be received from a loved one's life work. That includes approximately $500 billion in cash, 600,000 AAA rated bonds. Do you realize that you are an heir to a fortune? As a child of God, you have a royal birthright a place in a family that owns and operates the universe. You are a joint heir to a great inheritance through Christ Jesus. The Heirs of God package is a timely teaching series on DVD or CD accompanied by study notes of each session by Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons. Ten messages that will open your eyes to all God has provided for you. All I need you to do is sign here. Don't leave your inheritance on the table. Receive your full benefits that Jesus paid the price for you to have. Understand God's will and your part in His plan. See yourself as God sees you. Receive your full inheritance today. Order the Heirs of God package today for only $24.99. Receive the 10-day teaching series taught by Gloria Copeland and George Pearsons on DVD or CD along with the study notes for each day. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call our toll-free number. Discover your royal birthright as a child of God. Learn who you are in Christ and what is yours in Christ. For an additional 10% off, order your Heirs of God package online. You know, in the earth, because of Adam's sin, and Eve, by the way, both of them, there is the blessing and the curse. The curse came when man uh, disobeyed God in the garden and opened the door to the curse. But then there is the blessing that belongs to man. And that came when Jesus paid the price for the curse and the sin that was in the garden. And, but every one of us, if we want to partake of the blessing, we receive Jesus as the Lord of our life because He's the one, our Savior, He's the one that took the curse for us. It says He became a curse for us and He redeemed us from the curse of sin that came in the garden. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you haven't been born over again. And that's what has to happen to get rid of yeah. the curse that's that came right. in the garden. Does that make sense? That yes. makes sense. All right, so <laughs> just say this, just say, if you want to, if you're ready to make Jesus the Lord of your life, just say, Jesus. Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Take my life. Take my life. And do something with it. And do something I with it. So myself into you. I sow myself into you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' and name. I receive the blessing and the promise. Now that's what happens to you when you get born over again. That old curse gets out, the sin goes out. You are born again, the righteousness of God. Glory to God. Praise and now you have to find out what belongs to you. You're a joint heir with Jesus now. You're in the church, you're in the, His body, but you, until you know what the book says about what belongs to you, you won't enjoy the blessing. So we've got some things for you to help you understand more about what happened to you and who you are in Christ Jesus. We have a free salvation package and we want to sow it into your life if you'd like to have it. It's a book called He Did It All For You and two brochures on how to study your Bible. So then this is your, this is the blessing. This is full of the blessing. You got to find out what's in here to enjoy it. It's kind of like the health care thing. You know, you, <laughs> you have to read it to find out all the little deals. But this is a blessing. That's right. And it belongs to you in Christ <laughs> Jesus. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Living Victory Orlando Faith Encounter, Champions Gate, Florida, April 18th through 19th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. 
Living Victory Las Vegas Faith Encounter, Henderson, Nevada, May 30th through 31st with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. The 2014 Peru Victory Campaign. Kenneth Copeland will be in Lima, Peru, June 6th through the 7th at the Eduardo Divos Coliseum. Farrell overcame a poverty mentality. He renewed his mind to the Word of God. He believed who he was in Christ Jesus, and he took hold of his inheritance. And now he's living in the blessing. Hallelujah. George Praise is going to God. receive the offering today, Pastor George, and then we're going to pray over that offering and believe God for you. You know, our inheritance, Gloria, comes in so many different ways. Revelation is an inheritance. Yeah. Early this oh, morning, early this morning, I got up and I was praying over the offering for today because I figured you'd ask me to do this offering. And, you know, there's so many different directions that you can go with mm -hmm. this. And the Lord spoke to me and said this, remind them of what Gloria said about the hundredfold return. Mm. Tell them, that, and this is, I'm saying this because you preached this in 1978 and you said the hundred, you brought out that revelation. Yeah. And since then, this is what Terry and I have been saying to each other about our giving. The hundredfold return is working for us all the time. Yes, amen. That's right. Gloria, that was an inheritance that you left Praise God. for us. Has it worked? It has <laughs> worked. Amen. It has worked. Yeah. And it'll, it'll work for you as well. I was reading this scripture from Genesis 26. Isaac sowed in that land of famine. In hard times. Hard times. And received in the same year a hundredfold. Glory to God. And the Lord blessed him. Yes. And the man waxed great. That means he, he advanced. Increased. He increased went forward, grew until he became very great, for he had great possession of flocks of herds and a in great a store of In a time of famine. In a time of famine. So the uh, <coughs> circumstances didn't have anything to do with his blessing. That's right. The blessing That's right. overcame all the circumstances. So I wanted to let our partners and friends know, first of yes, all, how amen. much, how much we appreciate your giving. Amen. Oh. Amen. It just, words cannot Praise describe God. how much we appreciate Praise what you do for this ministry. And on everything you sow, you need to be believing God for the hundredfold return. Glory to God. And coming to you now coming in this life. In this life. In, now in this time, Mark chapter 10, now in yeah. this time. Does that mean in bad times? Bad times. Does that mean in a recession? In recession, Depression. up, down, all is around. Now, now, now Glory is now. God. N O W. Yes, sir. Now, now, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I want to pray over your finances, Father, in the name Thank of you, Jesus. Jesus. George Thank and you, I agree Lord. as touching the finances of the people that are listening right now. We but we speak a hundredfold, hundredfold into your life. Heard. We believe you're blessed and prosperous and Thank increasing you. in every endeavor. The blessing is working in you and on you now. Yes, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Yes. Amen. Now you say, I take it. I take it. I have it. I have it. It's mine. It's mine. This is Gloria and George reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for joining us today on The Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or MP3 on CD, go to kcm.org or call or write to us today. Remember this week's product offer. These ministry tools are designed to help you get the Word working in your life so you can experience all God has for you. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, be sure to request your free salvation package. This will help you understand who you are in Christ and how to start living your new life in victory.